Before we start, I would like to know a bit more about you. Who is in the audience? I'm sure they are data scientists, developers, engineers, coders. Please, just, just tell me what is your job and if you have any hobbies or activities outside of your job in the comment section. Let's try to have fun together and make this session interactive, all right? Okay, in the meantime, you share a bit more about yourself. I have a question for you. Why do Python coders wear glasses? Do you have any idea? It is because they cannot see. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to be here with you today to talk you through Smart City and its related sustainable challenges. I am Frederick John. I come from Brussels. As you can tell, I am not from the UK. And I am a consultant at Neckerman Strategic Advisors. So we are a think tank consulting firm. We are based in London and we operate in the US, in Europe, and in the Middle East. We have three services. We research, we speak, and we advise. We have written four books since 2015. And between us, I am currently writing one about mobility, smart city, and sustainability. That's my day job. On top of it, I, have, I am one of the many contributors supporting the World Economic Forum with their smart city and uh, new mobility initiatives. And I am also a guest lecturer at Imperial College London and Regent's University London. All right, but enough about me. Let's dive into what interests us today, smart cities. Here is the menu. Um, this is what I have prepared for you. And I guess it's been a while since you haven't hold a menu like this, am I right? Okay, so I'd like to cover these uh, following topics with you. Why do we need a smart city? What are their main challenges? What is a smart city? And all the components of a smart city. And finally, how mobility can address sustainable challenges thanks to a smart environment. Sounds good for you? Okay, you ready? Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. So before we move on, do you know which city is the first mega city in the history? I'll give you a few minutes to think about it. Please write down uh, what do you think uh, the answer is in the comment section, and I'll do my best to monitor who, who's the winner, all right? So why do we need smart cities? Well, it's because we are too many. Within the next 30 years, we will be 10 billion people on Earth. And the United Nations say that 70% of us would live in a city, meaning that the urbanization rate would be 70% by uh, 2050. However, it is already the case for most of the high income countries. Most of them are already above this threshold of 70% and for at least 20 years. I guess we all agree that the first smart city would probably happen in a high income country and not in the middle of the deserts. Well, perhaps it's something different if we are taking into account Dubai, but that's an exception, right? So if you look at the following graphs that I have prepared for you, uh, I selected few regions all around the world and some cities, uh, some, some countries, sorry. And as you can see, most of them, or all of them, are above this threshold of 70%, the urbanization rate. So our cities are growing too fast. And here is an example, Shenzhen in China. This is Shenzhen in 1950, Shenzhen in 2000, and Shenzhen today in 2018. So what was a small town 70 years ago is now more populated than, the entire, than my entire country, Belgium. So studies say that a sustainable city growth rate should be below 1%, meaning that the population should not grow faster than 1% per year. And as you can see, well, roughly not even half of the biggest cities around the world are meeting this requirement. A great majority of them have a population rate growing at three to five percent. However, uh, this picture includes 
cities as of 500,000 inhabitants. And what really interests me is mega city. So what is a mega city? It is a city with a population above 10, 10 million people. There are currently 33 mega cities around the world, and we can expect this number to increase by 30% to 43 mega cities by 2030. Do you remember the question I asked you? Which city is the first mega city in the history? Do you have the answer? The answer is Rome, of course. Rome, at the scale of the global population at that time, was a mega city with 4 million people living in the area that we called at the time Rome. So it was the first mega city of the, of the history. Did you have the right answer? So why do we need smart cities? We understood that it's because we are growing too fast, but because we are in such situation, we expose our cities to five main challenges. These challenges are environmental, inequality, resources, technology, and on top of this, governance, because we need to be able to manage all these different challenges. So what is a smart city? I still haven't told you what a smart city is, and it's a bit strange for a speech around smart city, isn't it? So believe it or not, the best definition I could find is from our managing director, Lucas Neckerman. And this definition says, a smart city combines its data, its resources, its infrastructure, and its people to continually focus on improving livability. A smart city is an aggregation of power and creativity, but also a body of data and life analysis. Are there any smart cities today? <sighs> Frankly, I'm not sure. I am not sure where is the threshold as of which you are smart or you're not. The only thing that I'm certain is that last year in 2019, they were 153 cities around the world with a smart city agenda. In my opinion, I think that these strategies should pursue only one objective, improve people's life. This is really personal, but this is one of my, the main drivers that are pushing me every day to work in this industry, the mobility industry, and I hope you share this aim with me. For some, a smart city is a concept that is a bit too subjective and ultimately not enough pragmatic to really improve people's life. Who's already heard about the term responsive city? If you have already heard about responsive city, please comment yes in the comment section. I would love to have a chat with you after this presentation. I'll be honest with you, before I was mentioned responsive city, I had no idea about what it meant. So what is a responsive city? Um, the best definition I could find is from ETH Zurich, uh, the university in Switzerland. Um, they have, by the way, a very interesting master class about responsive city that is for free and I can only encourage you to have a look at it. So the definition says the following. The citizens move from the center of attention to the center of action. Responsive citizens use smart technology to contribute to planning, design, and management of their cities. So basically, what does that mean? It means that it is the concept of a smart city with a specific focus on people and action. And frankly, I love it. The goal is to shift the approach that is based on technology, infrastructure, data, and so on to the residents by leveraging live streams of information. And I'm sure you know what I mean. One of the main objective of a responsive city is like the name suggested, to, to respond to city dweller needs, wants, desires, Unlike with a smart city approach, we start from what, is, what do we want to achieve? What are the desires? And then to think about what is possible. So we start from the end instead of looking at, okay, what is possible today in terms of technology and in terms of regulation? But the thing is, uh, 
the responsive cities are highlighting an issue that I have that I, that I have not thought about it before, um, because it may sound stupid, but before looking at this concept, I never thought about the fracture that a smart city could could create in a in a city. Perhaps it's because of my flower power mindset. I don't really know, but I did not realize that due to the massive requirement investments, a smart city smart city applications could only be for limited areas within a city. So what does that mean? Is it, it means that only the most interesting places would, uh, would be granted with smart city applications? This disequilibrium could only accelerate the distance, the fracture between residents in a metropolis. So would that even create more inequity to find a job or to get access to proper services around delivery, food or whatsoever? Uh, or to have a better safety and so on. Well, you know, now that I think about this, these possible consequences, this really afraids me. And I think we, we, we should think about that. I wouldn't want to live in such a future. So one of my colleagues mentioned to me very recently, we do not need smart cities. We just need love, lovable places. And I love it. I think it's great. So I'd like to, 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 to look at this term a bit more in depth. So if you have any thoughts to share, please do so with me and contact me after this speech. All right, let's move on. So he, there are three different types of a smart city. You have the engineered cities, which are urban areas that are built to be smart from scratch. So a well-known example that is very recent is the Wuhan city from Toyota. I would encourage you to have a look, it's really exciting. But also you have the space ports in Los Angeles where you have um, Virgin Galactic, SpaceX, and a last example could be New Cairo, the new capital in Egypt. Another type is the, the fast growing cities. Well, basically, like it says, cities that are recent and fast growing. A good example is Singapore. Last but not least, established cities. These cities are the city that we all know, Paris, London, New York, older cities that are, they, they try to get smart. So all the smart city types uh, I just mentioned, they all have six common elements. Infrastructure, connectivity, grid and energy, data management, mobility and logistics, and finally, service and technology. All these components fall into different applications. Applications that were identified by McKinsey, and they found 60 different applications. They are classified into eight different categories, security, healthcare, mobility, energy, waste, uh, water, economic development and housing, engagement and community. And as you know, well, what really excites me is mobility. So I may be a bit biased, but uh, in my opinion, mobility is the only application that can transversely impact the other categories, the other applications. I think, especially about um, security, you know, autonomous vehicles are expected to save millions of lives. Energy, what about charging points, re renewable sources, etc. Economic development, if you, can, if you have access to mobility services, you can source better jobs. You can have access to better services. And finally, community, well, it makes sense. If you can move yourself, you can be part of groups and communities. So why intelligent mobility is critical in a smart city ecosystem? Well, it's because our urban mobility is, in my opinion, the most important smart city factor to address, to fight sustainable challenges. And these challenges are congestion, pollution, and safety. So let's review each one of them. First, what about congestion? It costs every year at the global scale, $500 billion because we have 
cars that are stuck into traffic jams in our cities. In London, for example, in 2019, the bill was over $13 billion. It's a lot. Can you imagine what we could do with that amount of money if we had a fluid and efficient mobility? So now let's look at the top 10 cities with the worst um, traffic jams in terms of how. So the first one is Bogota. Then we have Rio, Rome, Paris, um, Belo Horizonte, sorry for my accent, <laughs> Mexico, Dublin, Istanbul, Sao Paulo, and finally, St. Petersburg, and so on and so on. So you can access the complete list um, in the INRIX website. Uh, more than happy to share with you the link afterwards. So that is for congestion. But what about pollution? Pollution is also critical. Urban mobility accounts for 40% of the total transport greenhouse gas emissions around the world. So look at this video. Unfortunately, transport is the only sector where emissions have increased by over 100% since 1990. So in other words, everything that moves into our cities is responsible for 40% of that evolution. At a global scale, urban mobility is also responsible for 10% of the global CO2 emissions. So if you think about the fact that the transport industry is, also, is already responsible for 25% of the entire CO2 emissions, the urban mobility accounts for 10% of these global emissions. It's a lot. When you think that over 4 million people die each year due to pollution, well, we may want to do something here. A last fact that is quite interesting is the world's largest 100 cities are responsible together for almost 20% of the global carbon emissions. So again, it's a lot. And through mobility, we can do something. We can decrease this. And the main factor to leverage is, of course, uh, electric vehicles. So now what about safety? Well, let's keep it simple. Since I have started this speech, and I know I talk a lot, 100 people died because of road accidents. And if we do nothing to improve it, by 2030, it's gonna be over 250 people for the same amount of time. It's a lot, but as I said, through intelligent mobility in a smart city environment, we can address that. We can de decrease that number up to zero. And it, it, it is one of the objectives of the European Commission to uh, to, to, bring, uh, to, to bring down this number to, to zero. All right. So I know that you are torn between listening to me very carefully, at least I hope so, or eating your lunch. So don't worry. Here's a list of very cool materials that you can have a look if you want to. Um, so you have the City in Motion Index from IAC, and uh, the Smart Mobility Index from IMD. So both are business schools. Uh, you will find rankings uh, showing the different, um, the smartness of the different cities around the world. The C40 organization, I guess you know what it is. And of course, the World Economic Forum, you have a lot of initiatives around smart cities and new mobility. I would like to end this presentation with a very personal note. So perhaps some of you are drinking a beer with their lunch, and I'll tell you, you are absolutely right. But do you know how we call a good British beer? Any idea? Imported from Belgium, of course. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention today. I would be more than happy to answer your questions. And please feel free to connect with me by sending either an email or scanning the QR code to redirect you towards my LinkedIn profile. Thank you very much.